So you will come out the other side of this video understanding what a surge condition is for a centrifugal chiller. And this is kind of a, a, a it can be a scary thing when you're on site. And if you're not working, used to working on centrifugals and their differences and how they're not like a lot of regular positive displacement compressors, don't get hung up on the terms, like it's okay. And I've talked about these things in other videos. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'll recap it here in a minute. So if you're not familiar with all that, and then you hear a surge happen, and it can be quite terrifying. Well, what do you do? What is it? What's even happening? Why is that noise being made? Like, that is an odd noise for a compressor to make. Let's talk about that today. How you doing? I hope you're having a great day. I am Holden Schamberger with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. I specialize in chillers. We're going to talk about centrifugal surge today. And with that, let me grab my model real quick. So this is a centrifugal impeller. This is what makes the refrigerant move and you know creates the pumping action. The this looks very similar to a water pump because what well, we're using the same theory and, and these centrifugal impellers, I mean they it's centrifugal theory, the same thing our blower motors also use to make air move. So how we're doing that is through velocity. These are your veins of, this is where the refrigerant comes in on your suction. This is your discharge side here. And as that refrigerant moves through, we are able to create a compression. Now, this is not a positive displacement. It's not a direct compression. So a scroll compressor, for an example, or recip or screws, those are positive displacement. The refrigerant molecules are being physically compressed as they get forced through the compressor and that's how we create that this is not doing that this is actually creating a uh it's taking velocity so essentially the refrigerant comes in and as this spins it gets thrown through these uh, louvers or these veins uh, just like a blower motor would do right so it gets thrown out and it just slings out into the diffuser section of the compressor. And as it goes flying, we hit the diffuser and the diffuser is designed to take all that high velocity, you know, kinetic energy and actually convert it into a pressure. So pressure we can work with so that that pressure becomes your discharge pressure which is what your condenser pressure is that's the base summary of the centrifugal now what's happening in a surge condition is and it's simple we're reversing flow so quite literally what's happening refrigerant's supposed to come this way but because of our surge conditions and i'll get into that a little more in a second the refrigerant ends up reversing back through this into our suction side and uh, very bad thing to happen you get a lot of axial thrust issues because it's just it's a lot of force uh, and it this is this will destroy your bearings all of this will get hot at that point because a lot of the cooling for this impeller in the system comes from that suction gas and it's used to seeing you know suction superheats of say half a degree to one one or two degrees very very low suction superheats and that it helps keep all of this cool and not to overheat well if all of a sudden our discharge gas is backflowing that suction superheat and it turns into discharge superheat now quite literally like it's it's a very dramatic event and it's it's, it's bad that is that will just there are plenty of chillers plenty of centrifugals who have utterly ripped themselves apart in their life because they were allowed to just constantly surge and surge and surge and nobody ever did anything to address it so that is what a surge is a reversal of refrigerant through the impeller now what causes that well it comes back to high lift so lift is your difference between condenser pressure and evaporator pressure and by doing that subtraction, it's a PSID, we are able to determine uh, how hard that, that impeller is having to push refrigerant through it. What causes high lift? Well, it depends. So you could have a high lift condition if you have, say, something wrong with the condenser. If you're not exchanging heat, dirty tubes, whatever. Even if you've got proper condenser water, it, you could be running really elevated uh, condenser approach values so whole separate videos i've done on condenser approach highly recommend you go check that out but if your condenser approach starts running high 
then that could push you into a surge condition. If you if you say you're having a cooling tower issue and your uh, your condenser water begins to run really high and you can't keep it down, that's going to push you into a surge condition. Or let's say you have a really uh, low load on the evaporator. Say we've only got three, maybe four degrees of difference from entering to leaving water. And we're making set point, but we are, uh, we're not able to get the condenser water temperature down. So let's say you've got that, that low of a load going through the evaporator, but you've still got, you know, 85 to 80 degrees of condenser water and you can't back that off or whatever your reasons are. Uh, a lot of valid ones, so don't don't take that the wrong way. But anyway, it creates a lot of lift. It, that difference between those two things stays really high. And that lift will overcome what the impeller is able to force through it. Most centrifugal compressors, they usually start to show some symptoms. You'll get into stalling at around 50 to 60 PSID. Now, if you don't know what stalls are, I've done a whole video on stalls. I actually should have posted yesterday, so quite literally the video before this, if you go to my feed, whatever else. Go check that out if you need to know what stalls. So stalls prelude or precede. Precede. Maybe I don't know. I guess I don't realize what prelude. Prelude? Prelude. It doesn't matter. They precede the surge, the surge condition. So... It's important to understand what the stall is, and for the same reasons we get into a stall state, we get into a surge state. Just the surge is the extreme climax of what happens. When we have those really high lift conditions, we overcome the compressor's ability to continue moving that refrigerant. And it creates this really high pitch or higher frequency, it's not always high pitch, but it's really high frequency, just swooshing sound that is, it can be very terrifying, especially if you're not used to dealing with that condition. And it is very bad for the compressor. I mean, I cannot stress that enough. You know, we've gotten much better with our compressor designs and their ability to take extended surging, but gee whiz, please, don't let that continue for a very long time. That That is the fastest way to tear up a centrifugal is allow it to just surge itself into oblivion. So while we may start dealing with stall conditions at that 50 to 60 going into 65, the higher that lift gets, the more the stalling becomes prevalent. And eventually, once you start hitting 65 to 80 PSID, you're flat out in, in surging territory. And it depends on your compressor, whether or not you have a VGD, video coming, or whether or not you are a multi-stage, like a CVH, where you've got two stages or three stages, or a turbo core has got a couple of stages, or whether you're a single stage. So all, there's variables for in design on how we can increase or manage that lift value. But ultimately, they're all kind of about the same ballpark. Essentially, between 60 to 80 PSID, you're looking, you're, you're in the middle of surging territory and you need to tread very carefully, very lightly. So just bear that in mind as you're moving forward with working on these chillers and just understanding how they function, what they're doing and why they're doing it. With that, if this was any great benefit to you and if you really enjoyed this training, go check out chilleracademy.com. It's a place where you can come to and learn the fundamentals of the chiller uh, industry and developing yourself and come out the other side well-versed and fully understanding exactly what uh, the different chiller systems, designs, fundamentals, and practices are that we need to follow. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. I'll see you around.